I used to use this and a pH pen to test my water. And at first, I'll be honest, I didn't like them. But they grew on this and I started using them more and more. But finally, the pH pen gave up and I had to replace it. This is the TDS out of the dual pack still left. So I've replaced it with a four in one. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to calibrate it. It says it doesn't need calibrated out the box. So this is just for demonstration purposes only. And I have to say, those are the best set out instructions I've ever seen. Especially for a dummy like me. So before we proceed, let's have a quick look at the Gigi, I hope I'm saying that right, GX PET04 water quality tester. Now this is the pH, AC, TDS and temperature. That's your phone one. In the box, you get this glossy instruction manual, a few sachets of pH 7, pH 4 and pH 10, of the calibration power that, and the test probe instrument itself. As you can see, it's all very neatly packed. And for the real scientists, or just pipette lovers, you get a small little pipette. So let's collect some samples and get started. Bring on the science. First up, we'll get some cups out. RO water. That's his with sample. pH 10. pH 7. pH 4. And we need 250 mil in each one, I believe. I think that's 250 mil. So I'm using RO water instead of distilled water. It did say to use distilled. So 250 goes up that line conveniently. Let's fill the rest. Next, I'll add these sachets to each one, pH 7. pH 4. Job that missed. And pH ten. Give them all a stir. I'm drying the spoon in between each one, yeah. and we'll let them dissolve. You can test the TDS, but you need some 1.13 calibration solution. We haven't got that, but we do know that we have got this for the TDS. So we'll switch it on. We'll do a background check and we'll try the TDS in here. So it's saying the TDS is five. That too bright. No, it's not. TDS is one. You see that there? Is it? Shit. 
shake around with the air bubbles. TDS three. That uh, dry off there before we use it. Next, we'll try our little TDS meter. See what that says it is. Don't know if it's picking that up. Zero, zero, zero at the minute. Stick it in. And that is saying TDS 2. So it's only. Focus. So it's saying a TDS of 2. That's two parts per million. So they are, it is pretty close. So out the box, it is pretty close to being correct. On Next we'll go to pH seven. I don't know if it's picking that up there or not. That is saying 6.9. There will be some discrepancy, obviously, in the calibration. I'm sure it does tell you in the instructions it is. Yeah. The, the pH it can be 0 0.01 plus or minus in accuracy, which is close enough for, for what we need. So that was the seven done we'll just rinse that off in the audio water that's strange something's going it's going down to one but that audio water has stood for a bit so that's probably why so we'll rinse that off now we'll go to ph 10 eh? see how close we're on with ph 10 9.9 .9 in the pH 10. So it is pretty good out of the box. <coughs> oh, there, it's went to 10. It's even better. Rinse it off. pH 4. There you go, pH 4. Is that correct? Can you see that? I may have to make the video a bit darker so we can see it. 3.9 it's went down to. So the device itself is well calibrated. Out of the box. That was just to test, just to make sure. But if we were to calibrate it, every little device is going to be different. But he has a step by step on how to do it. I'll give you the Star Wars scrolling step by step. Step two. Do, 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 do. And that's how you would calibrate it. Like I say, everyone's going to be different. And the first step is basically just how to fill up your and stir your solutions. Here's a tip for you. The remaining unpolluted pH calibration solution can be sealed, stored for 60 days for further use. Before and after use, please rinse the probe with clean water and dry it, which I did. So the probe itself was really good there, very accurate, out the box. It also has a temperature gauge on it, which we'll test now. I can only test it against the thermometer. Hopefully the thermometer is right. So we'll try it in this tank here. See what we've got. Twenty six point one, six point six pH, and ninety eight TDS. TDS is going up quite a bit there, but I had it right in the bubbles of the... But there you go. Temperature, 26.3. Let's try the laser. Am I getting this right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now that's saying 
25.3, 25.2. So that is one degree out. So we'll do it again this time with one of these. Surprised it's that low considering today it's 26 degrees outside. Ambient print temperature. But we'll see. Let that just distill in the water for a bit, get the correct temperature, and we'll go off that against the probe. But I am very impressed so far. pH and everything like that. Now, the reason why you're going to need to know what the pH is and all that sort of stuff is because if you're going to breed, you need to get a specific pH and specific TDS before you even start. Otherwise, it's no chance. Fish will notice them that the changes, know the conditions aren't right. Um, one of the major triggers is that if you don't get that right, it's pointless even trying on with that things like barometric pressure and stuff like that if you don't get your fundamentals right. So that's why I went and bought one of these four to try and get the fundamentals right. I never liked them in the past, but I have grown to like them, especially the TDS and the pH pen. I would, the, when I first got them, I didn't realize what I was doing. I, I was sticking it in, it was going up and down, up and down, but they do until they settle, then they settle. Same with the new one. Once it settles, lock it in, take that as you're reading, put it on your whiteboard. That's something else I've got a whiteboard. Try and track my progress if we am having it for when I set up the breeding tanks. So I'll take that out and have a way. I'll take that out and have a quick look to see what it is because obviously it'll go down seconds. I'll take it out. That is on 26.1. Is it there? That's what it's on. Just under 30. Oh, it's on just under 30 because I have my fingers on it. I'll get this right in a minute. <laughs> but you know where we're about. <laughs> With its roundabouts, pretty good. It's better than that laser thing, because that laser thing there, when I was doing it in that tank, it was coming up anywhere from 27 to 23, depending on where you were pointing it in the tank. So it's better than the laser, at least. That's it for this video. Uh, hopefully in the next one, we'll be starting a little breeding project. Now, I'm not too sure whether that's going to be the Cardinal Terras or the Raccoon Terras. May do both, who knows. But we'll start with one of them. What I'm going to do when I come to do the Cardinal Terras is take out the four biggest females and the four biggest males and put them in the tank and let them, well, basically let them have it. There's a little honeymoon suite for a, for a day. Take them out, see what happens. So hopefully you liked that video. And if you did, until next time, ta-ra! And if you're still here at this part of the video, you must have liked it. So there's two more for you to check out. I'll do one breeding, one DIY. Feel free to make your own choice which one it is. But please make a choice.